Hi, everyone. This is an introduction to the Recovery International Method. I'm joined today by some friends in the Los Angeles area. Uh, I'm Angela Sullivan. I'm in the Chicago headquarters office, and I'm director of special projects. I'm pleased to be with you today. And I'm going to go ahead and let each person on our panel introduce themselves. I'm going to start with Levi. Levi, go ahead, please. Hi, my name is Levi Askovitz. I've been coming to recovery for about um, 20 some years and it's been extremely helpful to me. Thank you. Thanks, Levi. Jenna, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself next? Hi, my name is Jenna Sobelman. I have been with Recovery International since 2015. It has absolutely changed my life. Um, I am a leader in the LA area, and I'm also the area leader for Los Angeles. Thank you, Jenna. Lynn, why don't you go ahead and go next? Hi, my name is Lynn Tumpa. I found Recovery International about 16 months ago. I found it because I was looking for a solution to my mood swings and my depression. And Dr. Lowe's teaching and attending meetings has improved my mental health 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And Joey, go ahead, please. Hello, my name is Joey. I've been attending Recovery International meetings for eight years and also been a leader for maybe almost as long, maybe around six years or so. And what brought me to Recovery International was myself needing some help with my self-esteem issues and depression, especially getting along with family. And what I liked about the Recovery International was that it helped me to be able to use the tools to be able to um, get along with people, make friends, and also help me with, um, the, with everyday life aspects too. Well, thank you very much. So I'm pleased to be able to be here with some people who certainly um, are dedicated to the recovery method, dedicated to Recovery International by being leaders for us. That's really great. I do want you to know one thing. I came into recovery and I was a caregiver for my mom with Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's is not a trivial situation. We will talk about that in a minute, but some of what she did, her behavior and what she said was trivial. And I used recovery as a caregiver. I found it very helpful to maintain a civil relationship with my mother um, to the end. So I think that really that using recovery helped save my relationship with her during that difficult time. So I just wanted to put a plug in there for caregivers. OK, don't overlook caregivers. So I mentioned this word trivial, trivialities. The recovery method is unique in that it is focused on average, common, daily events that can get people worked up. So these encompass things like being late for something, obstacles to get something done, inconsiderate people, any kind of frequent annoyance. So here's some fun things that you're seeing. You know, you you spilled your coffee or Starbucks got your coffee order wrong. Um, that person who was just last in the in the bathroom didn't change the toilet paper roll. Uh, sometimes people say things in a tone or an attitude to you uh, that might work you up. Um, a messy bedroom, whether it's a, a, a spouse, someone you live with, or a child, right? That that can be a common, average, everyday thing. So these are the things that that we're focused on, um, and so we are unique in that aspect. And by learning to deal with those average daily annoyances, you do start to build resilience. And when life throws you some of the bigger, larger things, you already have these tools in your toolbox um, to help drop judgment and help to work through those. So um, most of our day is made up of average common daily events. The things that are big things that, you know, that might require a doctor, a lawyer, uh, emergency, um, police, fire, you know, they don't happen very often. So uh, this program was developed by Dr. Abraham Lowe, and he was working with his patients to say, you know, if you can kind of help yourselves during the week, 
um, with those everyday occurrences, that makes the appointment with your therapist, your psychologist, your counselor, that much more effective because they can focus on the larger things. So recovery is a really good adjunct to professional care. So we want to start off with some basic concepts here. Um, and one of those is temper. And so when you typically think of the word temper, uh, what might come to mind is being mad at someone. And certainly we do have that. So we do have angry temper. And this is the judgment that a person or situation is wrong or someone did something wrong to, to me, okay? So I'm angry at someone else. And typically we might see some feelings with being irritated or resenting someone, being impatient, hating them, disgust, rebellion, all those would go along with that angry temper. And there's probably some others you can think of as well. But in our program, we have a word that isn't usual to hear, and that's thinking of temper in a different way and judging ourselves for being wrong or um, having fear or damage to our own reputation or our self. So that's referred to as fearful temper. I know I did something wrong. I'm worried about it. I might feel inadequate for that job that I was given. I might have a sense of hopelessness or shame. That's all on the fearful temper side of things. So you're going to hear this language as we go through an example in a, in a little bit. We want to make sure that you understand the difference between those two. Another important concept, and if you indulge me here for a moment, um, we have two types of environment that we think of. And the easiest way I like people to think about this is stretching your arm right in front of you, wiggling the tips of your fingers, and to those fingertips is what we have control of. That's our inner environment. And everything outside of those fingertips outer environment or external environment. We can't control anything beyond that reach. People, I can't control my dog that might bark during this session. I can't control my child. I can't control the neighbor or the lady that cut in front of me on the road yesterday. I can't control the past or the future. All of those things are outer. So where we like to focus in recovery is inner. What can we control? And certainly, even then, there are things that, well, we can't necessarily control our initial feelings. Um, if we're sad about something or we have uh, anger towards someone, we can't control that initially. And we can't control sensations that might happen because of a physical response that we're getting. Um, that person that cut me off, my initial feeling is anger. And I might have that initial startle and start to sweat and my heart might race and, and beat faster. I can't control those sensations. But what I can control are the thoughts I have about that and the impulses, you know, the what I do next. So that's where we're going to focus on is what can we what can we learn to change? How do we learn to change those thoughts? And how do we learn to ch change uh, and control those impulses? This probably is one of the most important lessons, though, to learn in recovery, and it is self-endorsement. One self-endorsement is worth thousands of endorsements from the outer environment. Basically, what we're saying is don't wait for someone to tell you did a good job. Just do it yourself. Give yourself that little mental pat on the back. I ask everyone to do that. Everyone in the class watching this right now, you attended today. You're learning about recovery. You're doing something for your mental health. That's endorsable. Um, and so what you're also going to hear today are some tools or spots. Basically, these are sentences or short phrases that we use. We're using those to replace those maybe negative or insecure thoughts we might be having about a situation with something more positive. So you see a couple right here on the screen. When you're endorsing yourself, you can't be blaming yourself. Can't do two things at once. Endorse yourself when you control your thoughts or control your impulses and endorse yourself for the effort, not only for the performance. So maybe no matter the outcome, you're still going to do this because you tried and you gave it effort. So we're going to hear about endorsing a lot and it's a really important part of the program and something that you should get into a habit of doing many times a day. 
So with that, we're going to start heading into the example portion. And some of our guidelines include these. Um, we're not professionals. We are peers. Uh, our leaders are peers. So we're not giving advice. We're not talking about medications or diagnoses or phys uh, philosophical discussions. We are also focused on those trivialities, remember? So we're not gonna talk about things like sex, religion, politics, legal issues, current events, or traumatic events. So with that, then you're gonna get a good sense of, well, what can we talk about? Um, and our first leader for the example period right now is Levi. And Levi is gonna lead Jenna's example. And um, our reader is Joey. So with that, I'm going to ask my panel here, my folks to unmute. And Levi, when you're ready, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, Jenna, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, great. Um, Joey, whenever you're ready, please uh, start with the first step. Okay. Step one, report a single situation or event that occurred, an everyday event when you began to work yourself up. Focus on a brief description of what happened, specifically what triggered temperance symptoms. Okay, uh, my son and I are going on a trip next week, and it's a third party that's making the arrangements for us. And I asked him if we know what we're doing, and he said no, and that started to, uh, I started to work myself up from not knowing what is going on. Okay, thank you. Um, Joey, uh, please go to step two. All right, step two, report the symptoms you experienced, both physical and mental, for instance, angry and fearful thoughts, confusion, palpitations, disturbing impulses, tightness in your chest, lower feelings, sweaty palms, and so on. Okay, so I felt anger. Um, I was tense. Um, I had nervous feelings like butterflies. Um, I also, I, I got jittery, you know, like, well, you know, I started th thinking, oh, these people are wrong. They haven't told us anything yet. Um, I also had thoughts that, oh, I need to stop asking him. Uh, that I'm wrong for, for asking my son multiple times if they've gotten in touch with him. Um, anything else? Uh, so yeah, some pounding of my heart, pressure in my head, um, things like that. Okay. Um, did you have any disturbing impulses? The only disturbing impulse would be to have kept it up, um, to uh, to have bugged him more and more to get in touch with the other people. Okay. And by him, you mean your son? My son. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Joey, when you're ready, please read step three. All right. So step three, report your spotting of fearful an angry temper, the all right tools you use to help yourself and your self-endorsement for your effort. So I was angry with my son because it had turned out he was having an appointment with them today. And instead of just saying that, he uh, let me get mad. Uh, so I was angry with him, angry with the third party that's putting this all together. Um. Uh, I had fearful temper that I was doing something wrong by constantly asking him. Uh, I, ha I have worry um, uh, about the situation, nervousness. Um, and that's about that. That's it when it comes to my anger, my uh, angry temper and fearful temper. Um, and then my tools that I used, my RI tools that I used were calm begets calm, temper begets temper, that to know is to know, I don't know what's going on 
but also that this is outer environment and I guess try fail, try fail, meaning like we'll find out when we find out what we're supposed to do and where we're supposed to go. Um, I endorsed for not raising my voice. I endorsed for not getting in an argument with my son, uh, endorsed for asking the question and ex accepting his answer. Uh, that's it, yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Um, Joey, would, can I um, ask you to read step four whenever you're ready? Okay. So step four, begin with before I had my recovery training, describe the temperamental reaction and sentence you would have experienced um, before you began practicing the RI method. What would have happened then versus what happened now? This will help you to note the progress you have made. Oh, in the past, before my recovery training, I uh, probably would have ended up in a yelling, screaming match, me being right, wanting, you know, um, getting into an argument with with my son over something I can't control right now. Uh, that didn't happen. And so that I endorsed myself for, for not acting um, the way I, I used to respond to things like this. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Jenna, for sharing the example. It was very well reported. Thank you, Joey, for reading the four steps. Uh, now I'll open it up to the panel uh, for some further secure spotting on Jenna's inner environment. And as always, we refrain from giving advice. Who would like to begin? Lynn. Yes, <clears throat> decide, plan, and act. Okay, very good. Um, Angela? Comfort is a want, not a need. Okay, good. Joey? There is no right or wrong in the trivialities of everyday life. Very good. Yeah, I'll spot that every act of self-control produces an increased feeling of self-respect. And I'll also spot that Jenna has the opportunity to endorse herself for all her recovery practice and a really good um, before and after picture. So it's definitely a significant difference between the um, the fourth step, which how it was before recovery and the way it was now. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Joey? Her son is outer environment. We cannot change the outer env environment but we can change our inner envir environment, namely our reaction to uh, the outer environment. Good, thank you. Lynn? Be self-led, not symptom-led. Good, thank you. Um, Angela? I have another, this is one of my favorites. Um, people do things that annoy us, not necessarily to annoy us. Okay, great. Lynn? When we control our speech muscles, we have nothing to regret. Okay, great spot. Um, I'll spot that um, we don't have to be heroes, angels, saints, or martyrs. Um, I'll also spot that uh, one victory over the inner environment is worth a thousand victories over the outer environment. And it seems like um, Jenna was able to remember that the trip and the travel plans are a triviality when compared with her mental health. Um, Lynn? Yes, it's average to feel uncomfortable in an uncomfortable situation. Good, excellent. Um, I'll also spot that feelings call for expression and temper for suppression. Thank you. And a similar spot to that is feelings when expressed, give relief to the sufferer while temper has no such effect. Thank you. Joey? Um, arguments and disputes, especially with family, they're distressing, they're distressing, but it's nothing dangerous. Okay, great. Um, and are there any other spots on Jenna's example? If not, we'll bring this example to a close. Thank you, panel, for your spotting, and I hope that was helpful to you.
Um, are we, we have, going to do? Yeah, the big Levi, five? let's run through the big five. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. We'll keep it brief. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so um, now we will do something called the big five, which is a kind of summary of um, the example that we just heard. And the big five consists of five elements. One is angry temper, one is fearful temper, one is muscle movement, one is muscle control, and the last one is called sabotage. Who would like to begin on the subject of angry temper? Lynn. The example giver spotted anger at her son and the company that was organizing the trip and her symptoms themselves. Excellent. And there may be just some angry temper at fate, that the um, the whole situation that um, that she found herself in. Okay. Um, the next element is called fearful temper. Fearful temper is the belief that someone has that uh, I failed or sinned or blundered or defaulted on some standard of average efficiency. Um, who would like to comment on the fearful temper in this example? Angela. There could be some fearful temper um, in terms of her own worry about the schedule and how she's going to prepare for this trip uh, and what that means to her own planning. Okay, great. Um, good. And there might be just some kind of um, general fearful temper about just not knowing how to handle this situation or what's the best course of action to take. Um, the next element is called muscle control, and this is where a person refrains from doing something which is harmful or detrimental to their mental health. Joey? Um, muscle control. Jenna, she was able to control her speech muscles. It could have been easy for her to prolong the complaining or the argument with her son, maybe the agency, but she was able to cut it down uh, to a minimum. Okay, great. Um, what about mu the next element is muscle movement, which is where we do something that is beneficial to our mental health. Who would like to comment on muscle movement? Lynn? Uh, the example giver m moved her muscles by exchanging an insecure thought for a secure thought and using the RI method in the moment. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and there may be some muscle movement. I'm not sure if it was mentioned, but there may be some muscle movement if Jenna was going about other activities related to planning her um, her part in, in um, arranging the trip. Okay, um, the last element is called sabotage. And this is where um, sabotage is where a person does something either uh, consciously or unconsciously that is harmful to their mental health. And we don't indict ourselves or criticize ourselves for sabotage, but it's something that we all do and it just kind of explains or helps us understand how we work ourselves up. Uh, does anybody have any comments on the subject of sabotage? We'll start with Lynn. Yes, perhaps some sabotage and not expecting a frustration every five minutes. And Dr. Lowe tells us when we do that, we won't be so disappointed. Okay, good. Excellent. Um, there may be some sabotage in the form of emotionalism, which is associating danger with the situation um, where there's no, no actual danger. And there may also be sabotage in the form of judgment of, uh, of other people. But these, you know, as we say, these are all very average and it was a very well reported example. Um, can we mention just uh, one or two things that Jenna can endorse herself for to end on a positive note? Lynn? Jenna, the in example giver can endorse for controlling her speech muscles because when we do that, we have nothing to regret. Endorsable. Great. Angela? And the example giver can endorse for making a business of her mental health uh, and walking away from that situation. Good. Yeah, and I'll spot that she did a really good job at 
maintaining her composure in a very challenging situation. Okay, if there are no further comments, we'll bring this example to a close. Thank you all. Great, thank you, Levi, for leading. Jenna, thank you for that example. Joey, thank, thank you for reading. Uh, I'm gonna flip slides back just a little bit and we're gonna start over because we have another example uh, to give you. So Jenna's gonna lead this one. Joey's has the example to give and then Lynn is gonna read the step. So Jenna, whenever you're ready. Thank you, okay. Uh, Joey, are you ready? Go ahead. Okay, Lynn, if you could start with step one. Step one, report a single situation or event that occurred, an everyday event when you began to work yourself up. Focus on a brief description of what happened, specifically what triggered temper and symptoms. This happened on Monday night. Um, I already applied for a gym membership, but I was contemplating when to go. I haven't been to the gym for a long time. So just thinking about going there and just like, you know, when was the last time attended? Uh, that's when I worked myself up. Okay, thank you. Lynn, step two. Great. Report the symptoms you experienced, both physical and mental. For instance, angry and fearful thoughts, confusion, palpitations, disturbing impulses, tightness in your chest, lowered feelings, sweaty palms, and so on. So I'll divide my sentence into four different parts. I'll start with the physical sentence, physical sentence of sweatiness, head pressure, lethargy, uh, mental sentence of how I felt. Um, I felt down. I would have felt um, just um, questioning my sort of self-worth, my self-image, uh, my uh my impulse, was, my impulse was to just be lazy and just sleep more or just to eat more chocolate, just to comfort eat, um, to get the stress out of the way. My, my fearful and angry thoughts, fearful thoughts are just like, kind of like ask myself like, man, I'm lazy. Why am I not doing this? Why am I not committed? And the angry thoughts are just like, uh, why do I have to pay this much for the gym membership? Um, is it even worth it? Um, and also just like, where are my other friends? They're supposed to work out with me. Where are they? So yeah, those were my sentences. Well, thank you very much. That was very clear. Thank you. Lynn, would you go to step three? Step three, report your spotting of angry and fearful temper, the RI tools you use to help yourself and your self-endorsement for your effort. So my angry temper it was first directed at the gym because uh, maybe they convinced me to go for a plan, which I was reluctant at first, um, paying for that too, uh, for the membership. Um, also angry temper at my friends, especially the ones who used to work out with me before, just asking like, where are they? Why haven't they, you know, uh, trade with me consistently before? And, um, the fearful temper I had for myself was just uh, feelings of uh, self-worth and also, as I said before, just uh, laziness and whether if I had the motivation to go to the gym by myself and do my own, own routine. And in that case too, like if I do go, like will I be judged for whatever workout I'm gonna do by other people there? Uh, so the spots that I used was that uh, comparisons are odious and outer environment, um, approval from the outer environment is a want, but inner approval from myself is an absolute need. Um, try, fail, try, fail, and eventually I'll succeed. Uh, the nervous patient can expel the myth of the nervous fatigue uh, through moving their muscles. And um, I was able to endorse myself, just tell myself like, there's, it's not really dangerous to go. Like it's gonna be frustrating, but it's good for my health in the long term. So I did endorse myself for going and to be able to get a workout in and just like not let anyone judge me for it. Thank you very much. All right, can you go to step four, Lynn? Look at the progress you have made. Begin with, before I had my recovery training, 
and describe the temperamental reaction and symptoms you would have experienced before you began practicing the RI method. What would have happened then versus what happened now? This will help you to note the progress you've made. So before my recovery training, what would have happened then versus what happened now is that I would have let my self-defeating thoughts get the better of me, um, criticizing myself so much that I would have just like not even bothered going to the gym. And because I wanted to address those uh, unhealthy thoughts in a not quite healthy way, I would binge eat either chocolate or some other junk food. And also just like thinking, pondering about um, the past, like where my friends are, like why are they, aren't they here with me to work out? And just asking myself too, like, am I always going to be lazy? So that would have affected, affected my um, daily routine of functioning in other days. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to put Joey in what we call the glass box. And we're going to go and start doing some spotting for him. And I'm just going to remind the panel that we speak in third person and direct your spots to me. You can either raise your hand on your computer or your physical hand. Um, all right, let's get it started. Lynn. Yes, I spot when we take care of our inner environment, the outer environment takes care of itself. Yes, absolutely. And Joey made a decision. He decided, planned, and acted. Levi. Um, yes, I'll spot that. Um, I'll, I'll respot what Joey said, that outer approval is a want and inner approval is a need. And movement of the muscles overcomes the defeatist babble of the brain. And also the friends and the um, staff of the gym are all outer environment and we cannot control the outer environment. Thank you. Yes, the outer environment can be rude, crude, and indifferent, but our job is to face, tolerate, and endure. Lynn. Yes, treat your mental health as a business and not a game. Angela. Um, our supreme task is our self-discipline. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, okay. Any other? Oh, Lynn. Uh, people, places, and things do not work us up. It's our thoughts that work us up. Absolutely. Levi. Yeah, I'll spot that we're good observers and poor interpreters. And also, um, with regard to the gym membership, it seemed like Joey dropped the judgment for the sake of his own mental health and inner peace. And uh, he also um, dropped the judgment against himself. He's not wrong for uh, purchasing the gym membership and the people who he spoke to are not wrong for uh, helping him or selling it to him. Thank you. Yeah, he can endorse for his efforts, not only the outcome. Uh, Lynn. Yes, when we feel our worst and try our hardest is when we make the greatest gains. Really good spots. Yes, Angela. People hope to be exceptional, but fear they're nothing more than average, something, something exactly like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is very average, I, I believe, you know, the averageness of getting back into a working out routine, the averageness of friends not doing what we hope they will. Um, do I have any other spots? Oh, Levi. Yeah, I'll spot that we hate routine and fear change. So the new gym uh, membership is a change. And also um, we get well in direct proportion to the amount of discomfort that we're willing to bear. So going to a new gym uh, involves a certain amount of discomfort but Joey expressed a willingness to do that. Thank you. Absolutely. Lynn. Yes, we don't wait to get well. We do things in order to get well. Yes, absolutely. Okay. If that's all, we'll go to the big five. Okay, perfect. So, um, as Levi said before, the big five is an opportunity to kind of have a summary of the um, 
the event that Joey just uh, gave to us. So we're going to go ahead and start with uh, number one, which is the angry temper. Remember that angry temper is outer environment, what we're angry at. So if anybody has, would like to um, see what Joey, yes, Lynn and then Levi. Yes, it sounded like the example giver was angry at the situation. And um, I offer the spot, calm begets calm, temper begets temper. Yeah, absolutely. Levi. Well, spot, there might be some angry temper at the gym staff, um, the customer service representatives who arranged for him to purchase the gym membership. And also there may be some angry temper at his friends for not being available to go with him to the gym. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number two is our fearful temper. So the fearful temper is against ourselves. Angela. I heard some fearful temper. There was some negative judgment toward himself if he was really ready for this, ready for the gym, maybe feeling a little inadequate as far as being, because um, he hasn't exercised in a long time. Yeah, it sounded like there was some discouragement. Um, so then we're going to go to muscle control. So what muscles did he control for his mental health? Um, it didn't sound like he complained a lot and, and called up a bunch of people to complain. Lynn. Yes, he controlled his speech muscles by not complaining. And that's what I have for that. Thank you. Um, and then we'll go into number four, which is muscle movement. And this is where we do things to move our muscles for our mental health. Does anybody have Lynn? Yes, the example giver moved his muscles by going to the gym. And Dr. Lowe says that moving our muscles overcomes the defeatist babble of our brain. Yes, and also giving this example is a form of moving the muscles too, right? Um, sabotage, sabotage is not a bad thing. It's where uh, Dr. Lowe likes to say that we will always be apprentices and never masters. It's it's reminding ourselves that we still have work to do. So can anybody see any uh, sabotage in this example? Yes, Lynn. There's always room for more endorsement. And when we endorse, we strengthen our nervous system. Absolutely. Very good. Any other um, sabotage that anybody sees? Okay. So then let's end this on a uh, endorsement. Um, I, I think that jo uh, Joey gave a very average uh, example. Yes, Angela. I think our example giver can endorse for moving his muscles and decide, plan, and acting and getting himself to the gym in that, in that first step. Absolutely. Uh, yes, Lynn. The example giver can endorse for treating his mental health as a business and not a game. Highly endorsable. Highly endorsable. Absolutely. Levi. Yeah, the uh, Joey can also endorse for signing up for the gym in the first place. And there's a strong connection between physical health and mental health and exercise is uh, really good for us. Thank you. Absolutely. All really good. Uh, you know, endorse for your efforts, not only the outcome. I will bring this to a close. Thank you, panel. Thank you, Joey. And thank you, Jenna, for leading that. Joey, thanks for your example that we all could learn from. And Lynn, thank you for reading. All right. So with that, we're just going to recap here. Um, we gave you a couple examples of how recovery on those average, common, trivial examples helped people. We all learn from those when we listen as, as panel members uh, and also help spot and help endorse and go through the, all of those uh, example recaps. That helps all of us, no matter what the example is. So with this practice, you'll be able to identify events that upset you, distinguish between those things that are really emergencies, of course, and what are those routine, average, trivial events, 
recognize symptoms that you experience when you're upset. You saw that in our examples. People were calling out those feelings and thoughts and sensations um, and your reactions to the situations. Then you're going to be able to really say, huh, what is my reaction? Really kind of put the brake on and say, what am I going to do about this? How am I going to drop the judgment? Uh, this is a cognitive behavioral based training. So all of what you've been hearing us talk about for those tools or spots are all CBT and they do help us reduce those symptoms. So lastly, thank you for joining us. Thank you to my panel members. And yep, and it's a double endorse as I've learned, right? Both double endorse and we hope our audience is doing that as well. Um, and I, I know that you're gonna learn more about the program. And if there's ever any questions, please, of course, feel free to reach out to, to me, Angela Sullivan, uh, Angela at recoveryinternational.org. And uh, again, thank you so much. And I really appreciate the ability to teach you guys some of these lessons. They're really helpful. Thanks, everyone.